Containing 60% of the world's last tropical rainforests, the Amazon supports an extraordinary diversity of animal and plant life. It is the world's largest freshwater system, and because it absorbs carbon dioxide, it plays an important role in regulating the climate, not only of South America, but of the entire world. The Amazon rainforest spans across nine countries, with the lion's share of this massive forest found within Brazil. It is home to 33 million people, about 2 million belonging to 390 indigenous communities, each with their own unique culture and language, as well as a deep connection to the forest and its rivers. Many of us have already seen dramatic images of fires and deforestation in the Amazon, but few realize that the biggest threat to this unique ecosystem, as well as the communities living there, may well be investments, both from the government and the private sector. Mega projects such as dams, mines and highways all come with high costs, not only financial, but at times in terms of heavy impacts on the forest and on communities. Organizations in South America are working to reduce the social and environmental impacts of this development and influence the flow of public finances into more sustainable ventures. The Brazilian Development Bank flexes huge economic muscle, and with disbursements of $80 billion a year, it is the main force behind Brazilian national and international development interests. It's a bank that's financed by Brazilian taxpayers, and so it has a key role in terms of financing infrastructure projects in Brazil, including hydroelectric dams. Those infrastructure projects should be serving the interests of the Brazilian people. But what we're seeing is in a lot of times there's a huge lack of transparency in terms of how are decisions being made, what are their strategic priorities, for example, in the energy sector, and how are they taking into account the social and environmental risks and impacts of the projects they're funding. One emblematic project is the publicly funded $18 billion Belo Monte hydroelectric dam on Brazil's Xingu River. It is going to flood 128,000 acres and carve a waterway the size of the Panama Canal through the Amazon forest, while also reducing an important part of the Xingu River's flow by 80%. In this local, and in this very special area of the Xingu River, there are two indigenous communities that fully depend on the environmental integrity of this area, which will disappear. Working with traditional communities in the Xingu Basin, non-governmental organizations monitor the compliance of these large projects to environmental and social standards. Only those living in these areas, those who will be affected, can really say what is happening on the grounds. As development finance pours into the region, the Amazon is under increasing pressures from thousands of proposed projects. The volume of infrastructure investment in the Amazon today is totally unprecedented. It's on a scale that's never been done before. But what we can see is that the dynamics will change a lot of the Amazon, forcing more population resettlement, new land occupations, and there is already visual evidence of deforestation around some of these projects. To underscore the situation, this map shows the accumulated pressures of projects on the Amazon as of 2010. This map, showing all the energy and infrastructure projects proposed in 2012, demonstrates the direction development finance is heading. We have already seen how important it is to engage with local communities and civil society, who can bring social and environmental concerns to the table. This is an essential part of making these projects viable and legitimate. The question is not whether development finance will continue to flow into the region. It will. The question is what type of development is appropriate for the greater good of the region and the planet. There isn't only one form of development. First, we need to understand how different regions work with different ecosystems. Secondly, we need to respect the rights of populations living in these areas that up until now have been responsible for the forest survival. Then we need to find project mechanisms that can be applied in a sustainable form. Non-governmental organizations in South America are working to this end. 
to ensure that investments made in the Amazon adhere to the highest standards and protect traditional cultures and the healthy ecosystems they depend on for survival.